In the last video, we covered the essentials of regular expressions. I'd recommend watching that video first if you haven't used regex before, but in this video, I'm going to cover some examples of how I use regular expressions to clean data and to scrape data from online. So let's get started. For the first example, we're going to clean up this data I found online of airplane stowaways. I first want to start by grabbing the data, so I'm going to start highlighting it from the top of the page, coming all the way down to the bottom and shift clicking to highlight it all. I'm going to copy that, go to my spreadsheet, and paste the data in. Let me just expand these columns a bit and make it so we can see all the text. And now I can start creating new columns based on these other columns to make our data more interpretable and easier to make visualizations from. So I'm going to make a new column name called survive, and it's going to signify whether or not the stowaway actually survived the flight. One thing I will mention though is that in some of these cases there were actually more than one stowaway. For example here there was two people, one of them survived and one didn't, and if I wanted to be thorough I could either duplicate these rows or create new columns for number of survivors and number of deaths, but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to ignore that and assume that there is only one stowaway per each of these cases. So to determine whether or not the person in each case survived, we can actually look at the stowaway's fate column. So all we really need to check is if the word survived is in this column. We're going to do a regex match, where the first argument is this column or the text that we want to match, and the second argument is going to be the regex pattern that we're matching for. So I want to make sure that we're grabbing both survived with the uppercase s and then survived with the lowercase s. So I'm going to use the brackets and put either of those in and then survived. And then I can go ahead and autofill and we can scroll through and just do some spot checks and it looks pretty good to me. The next data point we want to grab are the ages of the stowaways in each of these cases. So for our survive column, we were using regex match, which would just return true or false depending on whether or not that pattern was in the text. But here we actually want to use the regex extract function, which will extract a substring of the text based on a regular expression. Again, we're going to use that column for our data. And now for our pattern, since we know it's going to be a number that could be theoretically of any length, we're going to do slash d plus which will match one or more instance. And again, we can autofill and we get our ages. And we do have some NAs where their, their age is unknown, but that's totally fine. Now we have the date, but let's say we want to get the specific year that this happened. So again, we're going to use that regex extract function, select that cell, and now we're going to do slash D and we know it's always going to be four numbers. We can hit enter and we get this error that the number can't be coerced to text. All we need to do is come over here and because this column is formatted as a date, we just need to change it to plain text. And now our year actually shows up and we can expand the column to get each of the years. So I'll make a new column called departure, and we're gonna start out with that regex extract function again. We'll specify that cell, and we don't know if it's gonna be one word or multiple words for the departure, so we'll do dot star, which will grab everything, and then we can specify that there's gonna be a hyphen, and we can close that off. Now the issue here is that there are actually different types of hyphens being used in this text. It's difficult to notice, but the hyphen here after Santa Maria is actually a different character than the one up here. So just so our pattern knows to search for either both of them, we're going to use those square brackets and paste in that hyphen that we grabbed. And now we'll get coupon here. But I don't want that hyphen to appear, so I'm going to put our capture of the dot star within the parentheses, which means that we're only capturing that group, and that'll be reflected here. I can go ahead and expand that column, and we're going to do something similar for arrival. We can actually copy this text, because it's going to be pretty similar, and paste it. Except now we want to grab what's after the hyphen, so that looks pretty good to me. We got these five new columns based on our old data. And if we want to build any visualizations off of this, because the data is a lot cleaner now, it'll be much easier to do. And obviously we didn't need to do this in Google Sheets. We could have done this in R or Python, but I did want to illustrate how easy Google Sheets is to use for regular expressions. And it's just easier to see our data, especially when we're working with a smaller data set. In this next example, I'm interested in the news sources being used on the politics subreddit. For each of these posts, after the title of the post, we see the source of the article. I could use Python or R and write some code to build a web scraper, but it'd be a lot easier if I could just copy the text, use some regular expression, and extract these URLs. So that's exactly what I'll do. So I'm literally just scrolling and scrolling to get as much data to populate on the page as I can, but once I'm satisfied or I've run out of pages, I'm going to start selecting the text at the bottom. I'll scroll all the way up back up to the top and shift click. So we grab all that text and I'll copy it and I'll head over to regex 101, which is the website we used in the last video, and I'll paste in my text. 
So if we're just trying to grab the URLs, which are in these parentheses, it's actually not too difficult to do this. We want to search for a left parenthesis, and we have to use that escape character here. We want to be careful here though, because we want to make sure our expression is grabbing all the URLs. So the websites where it's the domain name .com or .org, but also the ones where there might be multiple dots, like independent.co.uk. So we're going to be searching for either word characters or periods, up until a right parenthesis. So we're going to use the square brackets and we're going to search for word characters or periods and we have to use an escape character here. We can close that off and it's going to be one or more. So we'll use a plus and it's going to end with the right parenthesis. So now we're fully matching the parentheses and the URL and everything looks like it should be highlighted the way it is. But again, we want to put this in a capture group so we're not selecting the parentheses. So I'm going to add a left parenthesis right around those brackets and a right parenthesis right after the plus. And now it'll highlight our group in green so we're not grabbing the left and right parentheses. And now to actually extract these out of the text, we can go over to the right where it says export matches, come down to plain text and uncheck include full match. We can copy this to our clipboard, open up our Google sheet, and there we go. We get all of our URLs from those posts. So this is the very lazy one minute version of web scraping where we're getting one specific text. But what if we want to generate a whole table from some data online? In this example, I've got the top rated breweries throughout the world, according to Untapped. There's no CSV I can download here, even though the data is all on this page. And again, I could use R or Python to write a web scraper. And if you want to know how to do that, I actually do have some videos on web scraping with R, which you can check out right there. But we can actually use regular expressions to pretty quickly get this into a nicely formatted table. So again, I'll start out by highlighting some of the data, going down to the bottom, shift clicking to select it all and copying it. And I'll go over to regex 101 and paste in our data. And the first thing we're going to do is come to this substitution tab. And you see we have a lot of extraneous new lines and it's going to make things a little tricky. So what we want to do first is replace the new line plus with just a single new line character. And that'll get rid of all those extra spaces. Then I could just copy this data, paste it up here and go back to match. I'm going to scroll up to the top and get rid of that first new line. And now we can actually start grouping off and selecting our data. So just to break down what we're looking at, this would be one row of data. We've got the brewery name here, the location, the type of brewery, how many beers they have, how many people have rated them, and then their average rating. So we can start specifying our regular expression to capture our data and anything we actually want to have in our final table, we need to make sure we put parentheses around. So we'll grab the brewery name and this is pretty easy. We're just going to do a dot star. And just to make this a little easier, I'm actually going to disable global, which will only do one match just so we know exactly what we're selecting to begin with. And then we can apply it to the whole string. So we've got our brewery name. Now there's going to be a new line and then there's going to be the location. So again, we can do dot star to grab everything. Then there's a new line. Then there's the type of brewery. So dot star. Then there's a new line. And now we want to grab the number of beers that they serve. We could do slash D plus here, but there might be a comma. Let's say if it was a thousand, it would be one comma zero zero zero. And we want to make sure that we're grabbing that comma as well. So we'll make a parentheses to open up our capture group. And now it could either be a digit or it could be a comma. We'll close our bracket. And then this will occur one or more time and we'll close our capture group. And now we're getting this 140, but even if there was a comma here, we would still get that too. We don't need to capture this word beers, so I'm actually going to explicitly specify a space and then the word beers. We do want to capture the number of ratings, and we can do that similarly to how we did the number of beers. So open parenthesis, bracket, it's either going to be a number or a comma, and it's going to happen one or more times. Then we'll close it off. Now we get this number right here. Then we see there's a space and the word ratings. Then we have a new line. We have a left parenthesis. So we're going to do an escape character left parenthesis and then a normal parenthesis to start our capture group. And kind of similar to how we had before where we had either a number or comma. Here we're going to have a number or a period and then some more numbers. So we could do slash D and then slash period to escape that character and that'll occur one or more times. We'll close off our capture group and then we'll specify our right parenthesis. And if we look over here on the right, we see our full match and then what each of the groups correspond to. So just to reiterate group one, we've got our brewery name, then the location, the type of brewery, the number of beers, the number of ratings, and then the average rating. And if I go back to these regex options and I change this to global, it'll keep selecting after the first match and our data looks pretty good. Now we just want to get this into a table format or a CSV. So we'll go over to substitution and for the substitution, since we have our six capture groups, we just need to output our groups and we can do that with the dollar signs. 
So dollar sign one, dollar sign two. Uh, but one really quick thing is that with the location and with some of these numbers, there are commas. And these commas right here are to specify that we want to separate these out into columns. But if there are commas in our actual text, Google Sheets will get kind of confused with interpreting it. So we need to put quotes around our groups. That way, the commas within the text stay within the text and aren't treated as separate columns. So we've got our first capture group, second capture group, third capture group, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then all we need to do is copy all of this text, go back to our Google Sheet, paste it in here, and it pastes it all into one column, but we can really easily go to data and go to split text into columns. And now we have a nice and clean data set in just a couple of minutes. Now this method works best when the data is really consistent and there aren't any fields that would appear for some data points and not others. But if you learn regex well, there are definitely situations where it's easier and quicker to use regex to clean and scrape data than it is to open up R or Python and write 20 lines of code to do the same thing. Anyway, I'm gonna link some additional regex resources in the description. I recommend checking them out, like this cheat sheet right here, which is pretty helpful. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'd recommend checking out my other videos if you're interested in these kinds of data topics.